dystopian times. Mitch McConnell was uh, very offended here. Uh, actually, let me share my screen. Give me one sec. Uh, because he claims that Democrats, and I don't even necessarily agree with him here. I don't think that most Democrats believe this is the case. But he says that Democrats um, don't think that corporations are people. Like, who would say? Of course, corporations are people. Uh, in fact, they're more people than people are. But uh, let's, let's listen to this turtle speak. Our friends on the other side act like corporations are not people. <clears throat> Well, what about all the people that work there? And all the people who have stock in their retirement accounts. It's not like this is surprising because this is the Republican Party. This is both parties for the most part. But to be outraged and brag about the fact that you are the party that believes corporations are, in fact, people as some sort of a gotcha. To me, I feel like that really is like truly dystopian. Um, Tiffany, I'll go to you because I know that you said that you were uh, looking to talk about this. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I, he's not licking the boot. It's firmly up his rectum. He's just, uh, it's comfy there. He loves it. Um, every time Mitch McConnell <laughs> opens his maw, I can't help but roll my eyes. Uh, corporations are run by people, but the company itself is not a sentient being worthy of uh, personhood. And honestly, I think Mitch McConnell knows this. Otherwise, he wouldn't. he would be more concerned about corporations and billionaires not paying their taxes. But here's the thing. Mitch McConnell has been subservient to corp uh, corporate America throughout the entire his entire political career, as have many other corporate establishment politicians. So even if corporations were considered people, they would only be considered as such until it was inconvenient to be so. For example, if a law passed limiting the amount of money a person can donate to a politician, I guarantee you politicians would walk back the whole but corporations are people narrative. Uh, I hate to sound like a broken record, but as long as we have money in politics and legalized bribery, AKA campaign contributions, these kinds of talking points are going to be persistent. Yeah. Um, Jeff, did you want to jump in here? Uh, you know, our friends on the, on the other side, they say the corporations aren't people. What about the people? Libs equals owned. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, They'll though. They'll never recover. I, well, no, we're, we're never going to recover from this. <laughs> I, I, th I'm so thoroughly owned. My brain is now, again, back in recovery mode, weirdly enough. And never no, left I, for me. Right. <laughs> no, I, I love how this is. To them, it's a gotcha. But understand that the people that are, a lot of the people that work at these corporations, they don't see the benefits of their labor. And so, yeah, the corporation, which is, by the way, an amoral machine, which is run by a CEO, a board of directors, uh, and all these top-level executives, they're the ones that see pretty much all the profit. And it does not go down to the workers. It doesn't trickle down to the workers. Uh, and it's actually a very authoritarian type of thing. I, I mean, it, when, you, when you look at you know, the American workplace in general, it's, it's not democratic whatsoever. OK, and so, no, uh, it, it, the whole argument of saying that, well, I mean, you should care about the profits of a corporation because that's what this is and not tax them, which is really important. Uh, that means you're somehow looking out for the people. No, you're looking out for your donors. You're looking out for the very richest people uh, there who are doing diddly shit for, for, for the actual workers. No, you want to help the workers, you raise their wages. You want to help the workers, you, you know, you make sure that you, have, and by the way, this would help the corporations too. Healthcare, Medicare for all, take the burden off of employers and do something cheaper like Medicare for all and everybody gets healthcare. Uh, and then again, that's, that's, so these corporations can actually then pay a living wage. And, and by the way, we shouldn't even be asking for, for just a living wage. We should be asking for $25 an hour minimum. And four day work weeks. And four day. Yes. There was that study from Finland that absolutely pointed out how, guess what? Iceland. Uh, four day work weeks. Oh, I, Iceland. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, no problem. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, for correcting me. I, I didn't want to put out fake news <laughs> or, or misinformation. I would get, I would, Facebook would come after me. You know how it You'd is. You'd be canceled. 
Uh, extreme? No, I would be uh, pointed out for for spreading extremist content. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the four day work week, six hour days, because of course studies have shown how you know the brain kind of shuts down and productivity drops after six hours. That's what we should be doing. That's how to actually look out for the workers in these corporations, not whatever kind of tax cut bullshit, mumbo jumbo, trickle down crap that Mitch McConnell is trying to push. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah, did you want to jump in here? Because I know that you're probably um, chomping at the bit because Mitch McConnell, I mean, he's such an easy target because look at him. But at the same time, I mean, it's not it's not super surprising coming from Mitch McConnell. So what Mitch McConnell did was very, very insidious, but it was actually very genius. Pay attention to the word that he said. There's a big difference about people who work for a corporation and people who work at a corporation. So let's let's not he was making a difference without a distinction. So allow me to do so. People who work for a corporation are those who care about the shareholders and getting the bottom line up and, and profits over profit over loss and margin and revenue and all that stuff. Those type of people are the people Mitch McConnell was signaling to, the people who line his coffers every campaign cycle. People who work at a corporation are just like everyday people, like you or me, who just got a job to put food on the table and to try to survive. But when he lumps all of them in together without making that distinction, anybody who was against them is now against the little man, is now against the little woman. They want to they want to get rid of your 401k. They want to take away your pension, which he fails to mention doesn't mean a damn thing in 2021 because whatever pension you have is not enough to survive off of. This isn't 30, 40 years ago when they give you a pension. You can, you can on a regular union job, you could buy a house, a car, and put two kids through college. That's, that's, let me, again, disabuse you of that notion. So that's not anything. He's talking to the people who wear suits and ties to work. And I don't mean, you know, a $10 tie from, from Walmart. I mean a Briani tie that's $250. I'm not talking about a suit jacket from Men's Warehouse. I'm talking about a suit jacket from Armani. Those are the people he's talking to, but he lumped them all together. So anybody who's against that is against you know, working people. So that's number one. Number two, we, again, we know what they think about. Republicans actually aren't that hard to figure out. They actually, they, they make it very easy. You know what I mean? They care about money, nothing else, nothing else. It may look like different forms in the form of war, military, industrial, prison, you know, the tough on crime, the prison industrial complex, keeping government out of your healthcare, the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry, all of it stems back to they just like money. So that's very easy to figure out how to be. We need to get enough people in office that can tip the scales in the balance for everyday people. It's that simple. I know it's it's a monumental task. I know it's a hard task. I ran for office before. I'm running for office right now. I'm fully aware of the perils that lie before me. But it's a very simple thing we need to do. Because if you had 100 Ilhan Omars and 47 Jamal Bowmans and 35 Cory Bushes and 12 ALCs, then the Democrats couldn't get anything passed that didn't, that didn't actually help the people. Let's not forget Rashida Tlaib and all of them, all the people who actually fight. And you may not agree with you know all the Democrats, all the, the, the progressives in there. I get that. But at least we're talking to each other and I can move you further to the left when I show you that, you know, this piecemeal stuff just isn't enough. Republicans, I'm going to throw out a big word, are intransigent. They are, they are camped out. They are not moving. We have seen this since the Southern strategy in the 70s when all these racist-ass Democrats left the Democratic Party and went and went to the Republican Party, and they have been ensconced for generations. So we know that there is no getting to them. I get that. It is 2021. I have neither the time nor the inclination to get you to believe the problems that we have. You're either with me or you're in my way. Those are the only two options that you have. One or the two. Don't try to dissuade me from fighting for people of color. Don't try to dissuade me from fighting for, for women. Don't try to dissuade me from fighting for any marginalized group because we have seen time and time again that you do not give a damn. So I say that to say this. It is incumbent upon all of us, everybody out there, to get behind somebody that you know that is going to fight 
for people like you and like me. That's as simple as I can make it. I mean, it sounds very complicated. Let's let's remove all it. As simple as I can make it is we have to be the change we wish to see. Leaving it up to others is not going to get it done. Our problems are not going to go away just because we're tired, just because we're, we're hurt, just because we think these are dystopian times. Listen, the sun is still going to rise in the east and set in the west. And if it doesn't, we got a whole bigger set of problems. But as long as that still continues to happen, as long as there is blood pumping in your chest and your brain is working, you need to get off of your ass, myself included. You need to get out there and you need to fight. Yeah, well said. And I'm glad that you you pointed out the insidious nature of his comment because that is really clever. Like Republicans do this to oh, where yeah. since they, they don't like they don't want to be working class, but they want to LARP as working class, you know, representers. Uh and and to me, um, that got me to think that uh Mitch McConnell here, he has big Karen energy by saying that because to lump in like the uh the executives with the workers, it reminds me of the people who would come into the store when I worked at Walmart. And they'd like threaten me if I didn't have something or I couldn't find what they were looking for. They'd say, well, I'm just not going to come here. I'll give my money to someone else. It's like I still make minimum wage regardless if you leave or not. So that's that's such a Karen thing to say. And, you know, that's a big Karen energy from uh, Mitch McConnell. So.